Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to IBM Edge 2015. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Live in Las Vegas, I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Randy Furking, enterprise technical expert, Walmart. You're involved in all the action. Walmart, a lot of pressure, a lot of volume on, on the retail transactions. Welcome to The Cube. No pressure whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys are a big IBM customer, and you got a great story. I want to dig into it a little bit. So first, tell us a little bit about your role and some context to what's going on at Walmart around some of the challenges around scaling, large amount of transactions, low latency. What are some of the, the challenges out there, one, in selecting products to do that, and two, use cases that you're under pressure to deliver because your customers are always banging on walmart.com, making transactions on the retail front. What's happening? Right. Um, well, I hired into Walmart back in 2007. We averaged about 200 million transactions a day through our online system. Um, we run on a parallel sysplex ZOS, uh, running CICS. And um, in 2009, we introduced what's called web services, using SOAP and SOAS services. We now run about 500 million transactions a day, so we've more than doubled, almost two and a half times the volume on the system. And with that, you have the um, uncertainty of transaction volume. So we have um, different holiday seasons where the volume increases, and we have no idea what that volume is going to be, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to predict what the customer base is going to do, whether it's from the dot-com, from a mobile app, or, or uh, uh, multi-channel platforms. Um, so I'll start with a, um, an example. We had a customer-facing application about two years ago um, that uh, needed a enterprise uh, distributed caching solution for the next production rollout. They had purchased a product that uh, was having performance and availability issues, so uh, we decided to design and write a cloud-based service running on ZOS, Parallel Sysplex, and CICS. So we created a caching uh, service, a caching as, as a service solution. Uh, since putting that into production, this application or this customer hits it about 15 million times a day. That's over 10 and a half uh, billion calls over the last two years with zero, uh, zero failures. Zero failures. Zero failures. And that's active, active across uh, two, di two different data centers. And so you wrote software for the cloud for ZOS. Yes. For Z systems. So talk about that dynamic. Um, how many people, what was it like, okay. um, and why? Well, first of all, uh, Linux, uh, whether it's X or Z, uh, ha already has a good presence with uh, cloud. What's missing in the industry is ZOS, the parallel sysplex. So uh, uh, my partner, my colleague, Rich Jackson, and I, we attend ZBLC where we worked with uh, uh, the council on uh, cloud platform under ZOS. And um, so what we wanted to do was look at how do we uh, utilize the assets or the capabilities of ZOS and make the Sysplex, instead of cloud-like, cloud. So we developed our own uh, self-service provisioning portal. Uh, it's all written on CICS, all written uh, on the mainframe. Um, and our services, all of our cloud services, again, are written uh, CICS, ZOS, parallel Sysplex. So we designed and wrote this ourselves, yes. So here's some, some um color around the scale and the, tr the, fa the failure region. Zero failures, Yes. the numbers are pretty massive. Are you guys tweaking the system? Is it self-healing? I mean, what's going on with the system? Why no failures? And, and did, was there work involved? Was that just the system doing all the work? Right, well, that's, you make a good point. Um, had we written these services on you know, the distributed platform, we would have had the same challenges and the same failures that occur on, on that platform. Uh, because we utilize Parallel Sysplex, Workload Manager, Sysplex Distribution, we're able to take those uh, unexpected workloads and manage those uh, ac across the entire uh, Plex. So what about the big flash mob that comes in on the, on the retail trends? You guys, because you guys see very lumpy you know, traffic, you know, the big shopping days come in. What's the shift and scale, and how does the system handle things of that nature? So back in 2010, uh, we developed uh, on the mainframe in CICS, um, a, uh, an enterprise or a um, application, basically it's a uh, router, a, a broker that runs on the mainframe. 
and it averages about 30 million transactions a day in production. So it's not a real heavy application, but it uh, gets a little bit of traffic. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Well, last year on Black Friday, it scaled out to 190 million, six times the volume. So we didn't have to change anything within the configuration of the CICS servers or of the Sysplex itself. Uh, that's what Workload Manager does, that's what the Sysplex does, is it manages that workload across the Plex. So no change is just no automatically changes. rolled over or rolled and scaled up and yes. no problems. Yeah. So we also have a, um, uh, as our caching solution, we have a mobile app for our, um, uh, for our global e-commerce uh, where we, we cache all of our HTML pages uh, in our ZOS uh, caching service. They average about 15 million transactions a day. Going into the holidays, it, it increased to 25 million. On Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it uh, increased to 80 million. We did nothing to change the environment. We did not add any more servers, did not add any more capacity. Here again, that's what the parallel system is. price point, are you paying out the nose for this? What's the price difference between the alternative solutions you had? So we did a cost uh, study on our caching service on ZOS compared to comparable services on X, and it was a five to one cost ratio in favor of ZOS. So. so less expensive, Yes. And no failures, Yes. and the other one was five times more expensive, Yes. With fail. With performance and uh, availability issues. <laughs> Hashtag so. fail, whatever they want to say. That's a good deal then. It's kind of a no-brainer, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so, so Randy, uh, the, you know, in the industry today, there's so much discussion about kind of scale out, distributed architecture. There's few companies that have, you know, the global presence that, that Walmart does. You know, how do you architect for, you know, the, that kind of global market and, you know, at the, that scale they do? How do, how, how do your folks stay up with the latest technologies and trends and, you know, move the IT forward? Well, here again, we work with ZBLC, which has been a, a big part of our success. Uh, so we're up to speed on the current technologies uh, that the Parallel Sysplex offers, uh, current storage uh, technologies, um, up the current availability of CICS and features within CICS. So with those, we just simply utilize what IBM has put together and we come up with scalable solutions. You know, if we, you look at the hyperscale players out there, there's a lot of discussion that you know they really just build the application layer and the infrastructure kind of takes care of, care of itself. Right. Do you still have an infrastructure team that manages things? How, how do the infrastructure and the application sit together? So we have we do have an infrastructure team, uh, we have storage teams, we have the middleware team as well, and you have your application teams. And if, if we all stay within our own silos, we're going to be very disconnected and and have a lot of different uh, issues. So it's very important that we communicate across those tiers and uh, work with the application teams to see what the requirements are, see what the workload is expected to be, uh, and then make sure that within the infrastructure and the middleware teams, the storage team, that they're working together to make sure we have the right solution in place. We did the big Z launch in New York City, and one of the things that impressed me was the mainframe's relevance um, because of the power now, all this kind of new capability, encryption, in-memory analytics, is Walmart tapping into some of those new things and, and how do you take the success that you've had and replicate it? Or is, is this a, uh, is there other use cases within Walmart that you see potential of this? Because, I mean, the economics are compelling. Obviously, the scale up, the scale out is off, uh, awesome. Um, it seems like a really big deal. I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the internal use cases or is this a one-off? Well, think about this. The, the mainframe is, is server, okay? It used to be called the Z Enterprise server. It's just a server, just like any other yeah. server. It's just a big server, yeah. and it's a reliable server, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, so with that, it has features like encryption with the crypto engines, uh, crypto cards, and so we're starting to utilize the cryptography within Z uh, as services for uh, non-Z non platforms. Talk about the database challenges, because you know we <coughs> we write, do our own big data stuff uh, within our company. I know other customers, they use a lot of open source stuff. Um, is there a database selection and architecture that's was failing. Why was the other guys failing? And why, 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 why was Z successful? Because you guys wrote your own code, so you cloud enabled the solution. But yeah, it's a big server, so you got a database there. How does the database not fail at that kind of scale? Okay. Um, well, um, IBM provides on the mainframe a hierarchical database called IMS, uh, re relational database, DB2. <clears throat> and what um, my colleague and I decided to do was um, fill a void that was missing on ZOS, and that was we created a key value database as a service, as a cloud service. And so with that, we've been able to utilize the simplicity of a key value database instead of putting all the burden on DB2 for relational. Uh, in doing so, we've been able to uh, be very innovative. Our key value database as a service, REST enabled only, 
You can use uh, structured or unstructured data. You can uh, serve up and store uh, GIF, JPEG, PDFs, um, videos up to two gigabyte object sizes. So we, we saw a need and we filled the gap. We just designed it really So you resource. leveraged it with the architecture of Z. Yes. Not so much trying to retrofit into DB2, so to speak, right? You that's, separate that's correct. Them out. DB2 is relational, okay? Yeah. And not everything is relational in nature. Um, the cloud service that we created for a key value store was not to compete with or take away from DB2, not, not yeah. whatsoever. It's to take the burden off where people were putting non-relational stuff into yeah, DB2. Yeah, like unstructured data and making all Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Social the, data, buying data, loose data. Exactly. So we're able to store, like I say, videos, video clips, uh, product information, um, photographs, whatever it is that we want within a key value store, which is a much quicker access than going through a relational or hierarchical system. Yeah. So Randy, yes. Walmart's well known for really pushing the envelope and <coughs> taking their suppliers and helping them to move forward where the industry needs to go. Uh, how are things going in, in, in your viewpoint? And you know, you, you mentioned kind of the ZOS. Are there other things that you're looking for from the community or things that you think we need to move forward to help you run your business better? Well right now my focus, I can't speak to the rest of the industry, but my focus is on the Parallel Sysplex mm -hmm. as a cloud platform provider. Uh, we work with IBM, a partnership with the uh, team at Poughkeepsie, and we work with ZBLC and other ZBLC customers, and that's been extremely uh, relevant and uh, helpful to us uh, in how we take our technology forward to seeing what the rest of the industry requires. So uh, the Z thing that gets my attention is also encryption. Is security a challenge, or is that not part of the consideration to you guys? Uh, security is a extremely important part of the ZOS platform. So we rely heavily on, on RACF, and we rely heavily on the encryption decryption services that are built into the product. On the, give us a little uh, inside color, if you can, on Walmart. What's it like there, tech-wise? You guys are writing your own code, pretty innovative culture. Yeah. Um, Share the folks out there, what's it like working there? Um, you have unlimited budget, I mean, I mean, what's happening? Yeah, I, mean, of I don't know about unlimited the unlimited budget, budget part. Um, one of the things that uh, Walmart technology does is they uh, do encourage innovation on all platforms, whether it's in applications, whether it's on the X platform or the Z platform, it's irrelevant. Uh, Walmart is about innovation, because yeah. when you are innovative, you're able to do things for the customer, and that's what it's all about. Okay, yeah. because we can write code all day long, we can do really cool, fun stuff, and it's absolutely meaningless if it does not benefit our customer. And so, Walmart does uh, encourage it's a data driven culture, isn't it? I'm sorry? Is a data driven culture, Walmart? I mean, performance matters, there's so much transaction going on. Yeah. If you miss a beat, revenue's impacted. Yes, but it's all about data. I mean, without data, what are you doing, right? <laughs> exactly. So. And what's about the future? What do you see next coming? What's the next? Uh, what's what, what has your attention here at the show? What, what's uh, what's getting the what's getting your uh, eyes popping out? Is there anything you see here that's good that's uh, looking to bring into the fold? Well, with, like I say, with ZOS being kind of new in the game of uh, cloud processing, the steps that are being taken with IBM right now are extremely beneficial. Uh, mobile is just another channel, right? So I started in this business back in 1979 and everything was uh, 3270 data stream. And <laughs> uh, then, but uh, ZOS has kept up and it's evolved. I mean, it went from uh, MQ series and TCP sockets and you know, uh, SNA. And now with uh, HTTP, with SOAP services and REST services, yeah. y you, can, you can handle any type of channel into the server, the Z server. It's a real, ser real multi-purpose server. It's it, not just mainframe. It's got Linux, it's got a bunch of greatness. Yes. But mobile is the new customer facing. It is the way that the customers get to their data, get to Walmart's products, get to our information, get to our prices, uh, get to our, our offerings. It's all about mobile right now. So with mobile, with cloud, and then with that, of course, is analytics. So what can we do to better serve the customer with the mobile channel, right? Um, with the cloud versatility. And so it's about analytics as well too. But one of the most important things that we cannot overlook is security, and that's where ZOS uh, really outshines the rivals. Randy, I really appreciate you coming on. Certainly Walmart, great brand, you guys are a leader. Um, final question, more of a personal one. Share with the folks out there who are watching, who's been in the business, not as long as you are learning the ropes, you've been in, you're a veteran, great success with this project. I mean, no failures, scales, amazing. You guys wrote your own code. A lot of uh, experience and uh, being relevant is key. What advice would you share to folks out there who are, who are looking to, to get to a point where you know, they're using open source, they're doing innovative, disruptive things. What's the secret to the success that you've had? Passion. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, you should do something else. 
when you do have a passion, you still need to be persistent and determined. I, I have failed more times than I've been successful at writing a piece of code to do something. But if you're persistent and you're determined, you stay with it and you have that passion, you will eventually become very successful at what you do. And if, you, if you're just trying to be mediocre about it, if you're just going along with the trend, I don't follow trends. I want to set the trends. I want to take technology further. Yeah, so you got a little R&D, you got a little fail points. Yeah. Don't go for the big fails. Go for, <laughs> you know, go big or go home as they say. But that could be dangerous. If you go big and fail, is there a mix, is there a balance between risk reward? What's your formula for risk reward? Well, if we didn't take risk, we wouldn't be flying. We wouldn't yeah. be to the moon. We wouldn't have a lot of the capabilities that we have. Now there's, of course, reckless risk, but there's also to calculated risk. So if you look at things from a simplistic manner, test it out, you look at all the different uh, possibilities, and then when you take that and, and you work through those and, and you're successful, then you can scale that out with confidence. Randy, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Randy from Walmart, we are here live in theCUBE, sharing some great insight, uh, some successes, and experience inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>